Are you pointing at me? Oh, yeah. Live from the woodlands, it's TRS. <laughs> More of that. Hey, uh, studio audience, how are you? Uh, give a round of applause, studio audience. And why are you clapping? You're clapping for Iron Man champion Kelly Williamson. Uh, a favorite to win, uh, to repeat here at Iron Man Texas. Kelly, how are you? I'm good. How are you, Ben? I'm very good. We're close personal friends. We should disclose that. We hang out together in Austin. All prob the time. Probably every weekend. At least. Uh, what is my wife's name again? <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. I know she has we did meet, a though. baby store. We all met. A flower store. And now baby, we just, baby uh, stuff. We're into the baby business now. That's right. Swankbabyboutique.com. Yes. Uh, they're not our sponsor today, but really my wife is my sponsor for everything. We are sponsored today by BSX Insight. Uh, stop the pricks. Uh, do lactate threshold testing with a calf guard instead of uh, you know making yourself bleed all over the place. That's not good. You will get a disease when you do that. And uh, it, it's not even accurate. Isn't that true? Uh, Jeremy from BSX Insight. Good. All right. It's up. To, it's okay for me to make erroneous claims. Good. Uh, Dark Mark, how are you? I mean, you had a nice vegan lunch. Uh, yep. I'm starving still. Some no, time to recover. Are. It's oh terrible. God. terrible. What do you think of this veganism, Kelly? Not a fan. I mean, uh, I've been doing it for a couple weeks now, and I have to tell you, I'm basically starving to death, I'm and sure I'm still not are. getting skinny. You look weak. I still uh, have moves. They've he not did. gone anywhere. Yeah. I'm impressed that you haven't taken any pictures of your food and put it on Instagram yet. Because you're really not. You're not doing it if you're not tweeting about it and showing everybody that you're doing it. I haven't she tweeted much about it. I haven't tweeted much about it. It's pretty... Well, that's because you're depressed. I'm Every not time you sit down to a meal, you're, you're hungry. I am, uh, I am hungry. Deprived. I am hungry a lot. That is true. Because I just don't... Uh, <clears throat> I've not done a good job of going to shop and get the right things. So therefore, I end up in a situation where like, I have nothing to eat, period. And I heard a rumor that you were eating vegan but putting half and half in your coffee? That is incorrect. <laughs> Almond milk. <laughs> Who's spreading these vicious rumors? Yeah, I, is, it I, 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 yeah. is it Dan Emfield? Is it Dan Emfield? I don't. Half and half is not vegan. I will sue you, you for everything that. you're worth, Dan. If you spread uh, rumors about me, that's libel and that's slander <laughs> and, it will be, and it will not be tolerated. My attorneys will be in touch. All right, moving forward. I think you just need a burger. A burger? All right. Mm -hmm. We'll get a burger. Uh, Kelly Williamson, let's get to know you a little bit. You're a defending Ironman Texas champion. Yes. Just once or twice? Just once. Only one win. Uh, why do I feel like you've won this more than once? I was second in 2011. That counts as a win. Yeah. Doesn't it? Uh, second place, kinda, <laughs> same as winning. <laughs> uh, you attended college on a swimming scholarship, so mm -hmm. you're one of these folks that started out as a swimmer. Yep. But yet now, you're known for being an awesome runner. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Look at me. Kinder, gentler, snark snarky. <laughs> um, when did the, did the running come naturally when you started? Uh, I mean, do you, do you, does the swimming give you like such a good heart and lungs? And then when you start to run, it's like, oh, I'm awesome at this too. No, you know, um, I was a, I am the, whatever, oxymoron you could say. Most swimmers in college hate running. They're like they're water creatures, and you make them run, and they hate it. They hate it. Yeah. They're miserable. We in college did this. Uh, my coach had us do this biathlon. He called it, and it was in the springtime. It was a cross training thing. We would do a two thousand long course meter swim followed by a four mile run, and all the swimmers hated it. It was torture. Yeah. Whereas I was out there like loving it, and I think uh, you know I ran in high school just a little bit, um, but I ran the four hundred only because I didn't know anything about track. So when What's your I fastest time, you know I'm. I feel like Be it honest. was like I feel like it was like a sixty-two, but I don't. I that seems really fast now. That's pretty good. Yeah, but I'm, I, I I might not have a good memory, but we I signed up for the track team and I went to the meeting and they said, "What do you run?" And I'd never run track, so I didn't know. So I looked at the person next to me. I said, "What's one time around the, the track?" And they said, "That's a 400. So I wrote the four hundred down. So for the next two years, all I ever got to run was a four hundred. <laughs> I never got to do anything else. So that's what I did. Um, so running is. Kind of come naturally, I guess you could say, but um, you know, I've definitely had my um, breakthrough moments, and you know, I with with the half marathon, I think I ran like I can't for a couple of years. I was stuck at like a one seventeen, one eighteen. I couldn't go under that. It's garbage. 
one seventeen. Uh, yeah, that's uh, that's moving. Uh, you went sub uh, three hours last year, mm -hmm. and uh, only only woman to go sub three. Uh, of course, you love beer. I know that. Uh, you're the only athlete I know that's actually sponsored uh, by a brewery. You have a beer sponsor. How cool is that? And uh, you brought us a six pack. So They're awesome. Hops and grain. Talk to us about hops and grain. I first learned about hops and grain uh, at the Flow Track Beer Mile, of which you embarrassed all of Trap on with your performance. I did. <laughs> How could somebody love beer so much and be a decent runner and do so poorly at the Beer Mile? Well, I did that. You were basically off the plane. It didn't matter. No excuses. That made them. No excuses from Canada. Ironman Cosmo made no difference. Coming off the plane made no, no difference. At least you finished, which our friend Lance, who attempted it, yeah. dropped out after two laps. That's true. He did. He did. I finished. I had fun, but I, I was terrible. Is it true you always drink beer before a race? I, not directly before, but yes, the days prior and the night before. So yeah. you'll have a beer or two today? Yes. A couple of beers tonight? Yeah, one or two. Hops and grain? Of course. If I can have it, but if I'm, I frequently go light. I do like a Stella oh. or a Peroni. So oh. Try to be good. It seems controversial. It's like uh, so someone specialized by, uh, sponsored by Specialized, but then. Uh, like the if I go to a restaurant, I'm not going to carry my beer in. That would be rude. And illegal. Yeah. And illegal. I tried to do that just at lunch, and uh, <laughs> we tried to bring a little mini keg in there, and they, they kicked us out. Yeah. It's so rude. Awesome. So rude. Um, what else uh, do we want to talk about here? You went to the Olympic Training Center in 2002. Was that like to try to make the Olympic squad back in the day, or was that just a place to train? That was um, post-college. I took about four and a half years to graduate at Illinois, and um, I was didn't know what I wanted to do with my life and started doing triathlon. It was fun. I was working in a running store in Panera. and um, Where's Panera? Panera Bread. Oh, I think you're thinking of Panera, uh, yeah. the town. Uh, Panera, Panera, Illinois. Yeah. Panera, Illinois. Yeah, yeah. I like that. And uh, some coaching. The so, suburb of Einstein's. <laughs> I, uh, so you were coaching. Yeah, some uh, summer league coaching. But I, I uh, had done some triathlons, had done pretty well. I went to uh, age group nationals in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, and, and got, I think, third in my age group. And a friend of mine prompted me to try out or – apply to the Olympic Training Center team, yeah. and uh, this is in 01, I guess, and I, I said, no, I don't want to be serious about this anymore. This is, I've done it. I want to have fun, but then I thought, oh, well, maybe I'll just apply because it was in Colorado, yeah. and I really wanted to kind of move out of Illinois, preferably out west, so. I'm from Michigan. I don't blame you. Yeah. I ended up in Colorado for a while. So I applied, and I got in, and so suddenly I was like, well, I, I kind of didn't want to do it. I was like, no, I'm, just, I'm not going to be serious. This is fun. Then I was like, you don't know what you want to do with your life. You know, you're 24. Um, you can go live at the Olympic Training Center, trade for triathlon full time. Why the heck not? So I did. And then when I did that, I had to get the pro card. So kind of jumped right into it. So they made you turn pro. Yeah. And is this where you met Derek? I met him. Um, so I moved in 02. And yeah, we actually met at a bike race in 2003. Met him at Hill Climb in Colorado. Yeah. It was a love at first sight at this bike race. It was. Well, um, we met, and I, I was by myself. Uh, I'd gone to the bike race by myself. I had stress fractures. I was injured, of course. So I did the bike race and uh, was going to my car, and I had a, a backpack on that said, 2004 Athens, mm. Olympic backpack, right? That's pretty it cool. was 03. And I'm walking to my car, and this guy walks up behind me, and he has long blonde hair, and he taps me on his shoulder, and he goes, hey, did you go to Athens? And I turned around, and I said, I said, uh, no, I live at the training center, and I, I do triathlons. I said, where are you from, anyway? Because he had this <laughs> thick accent and long hair, and he looked like a southern hippie. And uh, we continue to talk, and somehow we we exchange numbers. We go back to Color Springs. This we, is Derek? This is Derek, yeah. Derek had, he had long, long hair. hair. He had long, straight hair. Um, and a and thick much accent? Much thicker, yeah, much thicker southern accent. So Wow. So we go back to Colorado. He woos me over beer, and we hang out, and we start dating and about a year later, I said to him, um, hey, do you, this is why I'm, I'm leery of these shows, Ben, because I'm a little slow sometimes. I said, do you remember what you said to me when we met? He's like, and he kind of looks at me. And I said, you asked me if I went to Athens. It was 2003. <laughs> and he goes, and you bought it. <laughs> well, like Derek Williamson, so his pickup lines. Literally took me a year of mulling that over and suddenly realized, what, what was he thinking? And then I thought, oh, he... Played me and I totally so you credit him for his uh, for his seduction, or is yeah. this uh, he, he tricked you? I think he tricked me. I think so too. Is yeah. it the same thing though? 
Uh, look into the camera and tell Derek you resent him for treating you. <laughs> no, I resent him because when we started riding bikes together, um, we would I would ride with the guys, and I was weak on the bike. Was weak, not anymore. Um, that's right. But he would ride with me, and I thought that's so nice. This guy that's he rides with me. He doesn't drop me like all these other sweetheart. guys. It was sweet. And then after about six months, when he realized we were dating officially, he started dropping me, and we started arguing. <laughs> So that's what I blame him for. Oh, uh, that's hysterical. Yeah. He's, Mark, just, would you ever do that to a significant other is uh, drop them on a bicycle? If I if I had the, the capability to even do that, probably you're not. You're not able to drop uh, any of the guys you're dating? Nope. All right. <laughs> not as of yet. That's, uh, that's good. That's an interesting dynamic, being sort of married and then he's also coaching you. Yeah. Does that get weird sometimes? Or are you able to separate... You know, we're now uh, being a married couple, and we're not being coach and athlete. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, it definitely has its moments. I think uh, we <clears throat> we know when to to separate it. Um, he gives me the guidance. He gives me the 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 um, you know his view. He looks at. I can kind of sketch out what I think I need to do. He looks at it and says, "We need to tweak it. You need to do this. You need to do this." Yeah. I I listen to it. I think if we find we start to get a little. I think I need to really do something. He can step back and say, right. you know what? Like we know our, our marriage is far more important than this coaching relationship. And so it's a good medium. Um, but I think we, but I also think he, he knows me and understands me better than anybody else. So he can look at me and see I'm tired or see that I, you know, see I feel good and I'm able to tweak the weekend and, and go a little harder, you know, stuff like that. So Does he give you a pretty good discount uh, in terms of uh, the rates? It's okay. Uh, a little bit. I think it should give you a good rate. I, mean, I can negotiate on your behalf if you want. Yeah, you need an agent to step yeah. in the middle I do. Yeah. Uh, and sort of represent your interests here because I don't want you to get bullied in this situation. No, I no, I win. You win. I win. Of course. I can punch him hard in his arm and it hurts him and then he whines for a few days. So I mean, he might be the coach and there's a little bit of power in that, but you're the wife. Happy wife, happy life. That's what they say. <laughs> That's a brilliant. You should you should like coin that term or something. I think it's been coined. Yeah. No, I've never heard that before. No, no. <laughs> yeah, it should be a bumper sticker. Yeah, it should. Uh, you've heard it here first, uh, ladies and gentlemen. We'll be starting with bumper stickers. It'll just sweep the nation. They'll be everywhere. <laughs> We're gonna make tens of dollars. Tens of dollars. Um, so what's the plan for uh, Saturday? Um, just go like hell. Can you be more specific? Who do you want to uh, who do you want to punish out there in the race course? Is there a woman out there? Uh, oh, I know you're what you're doing. I see, you, I see I see where you're going with I this. am angry at her. I have to beat her. <laughs> Maybe uh, I'll give you some examples. Maybe uh, Rachel Joyce, for example. No, Rachel's pretty nice. I like Rachel. Of course she's nice, but you're competing. You're yeah. pros. You're, but she may be too nice. She's trying to take your money. <laughs> My money. <laughs> it's rightfully yours. You're the defending champion. Um I I, you know, I have great memories of this race, right, from last year. Um, but I clearly expect it to be a lot tougher of a day. It's, yeah. it's a much more competitive field. Um, there are, I mean, literally on paper, you look at this, there's, you know, eight girls on paper that can and, you know, are completely capable of winning this race. Um, but I think for me, it's about, it's about executing my race and yeah. knowing that um, swim to my capabilities, stay relaxed, but stay strong and stay you know, there. I was fortunate to lead the swim last year, but there are some really good swimmers here. So stay, stay with those people. Um, and the bike is going to be. I mean, there will be girls going way up the road, and I know that. So I'm not, you know, right. an idiot. So um, I have to keep my wits about me and stay positive. And 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 also, I think know that what I always remind myself of when um, I can't see people and I don't know where they are, um, that I tend to ride a lot better the back half of my rides and rides races everything. So those final 20, 30 miles when I think it's going to be windy, um, really gritting my teeth and, and, and staying on my power, staying on my yeah. plan and knowing that, cause even last year I brought some people back at the end. So, um, sticking to my plan and, and not if I get off the bike and if that, that gap is bigger than I want it to be, not getting discouraged, staying really positive and, um, and hopefully for me it's, it's really hot and, you know, really tough run. Cause I think that'll suit me. I think so too. I mean, I think that, uh, some of these folks have just not been in the heat. I mean, I was talking to like Lionel Sanders at Galveston. Mm -hmm. And of course, he's training indoors up in Canada and he's got the heat turned up. It's not the same. Yeah. It's not the same as running 
outside no, in the humidity. For sure. I mean, even, you know, even the coolest days in Austin, you still come back and you're, you're soaked. I mean, a, a cool day is in the what low seventies, maybe. I know when I run my 20 minutes a day uh, <laughs> at 5 PM, it's just brutal. It's On your uh, treadmill. The heat is brutal. The time. It's the hottest time of day. I know. Yeah. It's rough, and I've got to push a, a one-year-old in a in a you know. How that happens? That's, that's that's tough. I can explain to you how it happens. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, the run. Oh, that's different. Yeah, <laughs> that's different. Uh, it's funny, you know, Mark. Would you notice that the people we've talked to today, the women seem to be extremely nice. They love their competitors, or they like their competitors. Yes, but as soon as they're off off <laughs> mic, everything's you know behind the back, and just will you chat, tweet chat, negatively about someone as soon as we uh, end the interview? Will I? Yes. Maybe be negative via Twitter. Everyone's mm. too nice. I want to start some fights. I know you do. I know. I know you do. The guys, they'll give me some drama. <laughs> Matt Hansen was kind of in the mood where he was like, I'm going to win. That's it. Yeah. Oh, yeah? It was just to fuck he everybody had, else. He had some good swag happening, some good swagger. Uh, Dark Mark, uh, cursing in a store full of people. There's no kids here. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Emerges a kid. <laughs> Kelly, uh, please... Uh, Reprimand Dark Mark for his language. All right. Uh, let's get into our rapid fire five questions. Have you been practicing for this? No. Are you studied up? Son of, this is on a bad. We're going to do this game show style, okay? We're going to a little slower pace. Um, oh, I need to start over. Give yourself a little. All right. Kelly Williamson, question number one. What German born British Baroque composer? wrote the piece Music for the Royal Fireworks. Handel. That is correct. Is it really? Boom. That is correct. That's my name. That's your maiden name. Funny how that works. Hey, oh, give it up. Did one on for purpose. one. Did, did not. On purpose. Oh, thanks. See, I didn't even get that. Question number two. <laughs> Where is Larry Bird from? Indiana. I need. Oh. Oh. Larry Bird. I'll give you a hint. There's only one place I'd rather be. That was a terrible hint. <laughs> Back home again in Indiana? It's a song. Yes, you're going to be very disappointed in yourself. Where's he from? It's an Indiana town. French Lick. Oh, French Lick. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I missed that. You're from Zionsville, I'm huh? I'm from Zionsville. I worked for Eli Lilly for five years. Yeah. You see, as you know, Zionsville and French Lick are not the same. Zionsville was kind of a snooty little town. You think? Well, I'm, it's kind of one of these Indianapolis suburbs. Zionsville, Carmel. Kind yeah, of yeah. Saw them as they're rich. Yeah. Were you rich? No, up? no. We moved there when it was we were in the country. Oh. Farmland. You were squatting in some property that wasn't yours. <laughs> <laughs> now my parents live in Trafalgar. I don't know where that is. Yeah, exactly. All right. It's, Neither does the audience. Let's move on to question number please. three. Uh, question number three. What is more ripped, uh, the Hulk's underpants or your arms? Very, very ripped arms. <laughs> That's fantastic. The what? What's more ripped? The Hulk's underpants or your arms? The Hulk's underpants. I'm not that. Ripped. That is correct. The Hulk's <laughs> underpants are more ripped technically. But uh, congratulations on your arms, though. Oh, thanks. Question number four. Uh, what the hell is wrong with your cat? Nothing. What kind of question is that? Kind of oh, question? I don't know. I ran out of material. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Dark you Mark. have an odd cat. Dude, are you jealous Dark of our Mark. cat? No, I'm not he's jealous. He's stronger than you. Your cat. He's, got, he's got a lot more muscle. A lot of cat people oh. here. He's very muscular. You guys have a cat. Mark has cats. It. Justin Dare has two cats. We're I have a 25 pound cat for the record. My God. It's diabetic. He's, he's, That's what's no, wrong. No, he's not, is the thing. We had him blood tested a year ago. 25 no pound cat. Happening. Well, then. This question sucks. No, he's, it's a good question. Terrible but, um, question, Mark. I need to talk to you about your joke writing. <laughs> no, it's good because I got to talk about my cat who. There's nothing wrong with him. Nothing just, wrong with her cat. He's just overly developed muscle-wise. Strong. Fat cat. That sounds like a good problem to have. It's, it's tough. Question number five. Final question. What is the biggest threat to triathlon right now? The fire ant. Oh, wait. I just read the answer. <laughs> <laughs> what is this, amateur hour? You'd, like, you'd think this was the first time we were broadcasting live on the internet. Uh, let's, uh, let's say that that's not the correct answer. Let's say I was just giving an example. <laughs> what is the biggest threat to triathlon right now? Uh, is it... Uh, <laughs> oh. did triathlon Global warming? Uh, slow twitch? Uh, um. Andrew Messick? Jeff Edwards? <laughs> um, 
it's these cords on my feet. Yeah, that is correct, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Give it up for Kelly Williamson. <laughs> Well, listen, uh, Kelly. Yes. Well, we've said it all. We've talked about everything. We know uh, you want to destroy your competitors on Saturday, especially I, Rachel I, Joyce. I, especially I Rachel know. Joyce, who you hate. I will be honest. We, we all like. We all, you know, we're all competitive. Um, of I've course. just, I've never been one for. You don't trash talk. Spouting my mouth off. Um, but I will say, like, I have a big instinct when I get out there. I'm, I'm extremely competitive, and I think that's one reason why you don't see me. I'm not, you know, smiling and. and well, here's what I'm going to do. I'm, uh, I'm going to play a fantasy triathlon. I'm going to play the $100 game. So people out there have the chance to win $100 from me. Actually, more than that. The payout is going to be what for that? $450 if five, for the five-person pool? I'm going to put you in my top five, Kelly, after this oh, interview. I'm very confident. Thanks. And thanks. I want you to win first and give me a lot of points. I will do my best. So no one humiliates me. Get you a paycheck. All right. Thank you so much for being here. Everybody thank give you. it up for Kelly Williamson, Ironman champion. All right.